Hey, my name is Thomas and today let's have some light-hearted, cheap uh, analog camera fun. I mean, it's 2022, we've had a pandemic situation, we have a lot of su supply problems because of war, we have a lot of devastating effects uh, in on the earth, but also on, uh, yeah, on our economy. So the cheaper the better, right? And I've got a West German super good rangefinder camera and it's only 50 bucks maybe more or less so let's have some fun they don't want to look at me Quack, quack. So the camera I've got with me today is called the Zeiss Econ Contessa LKE. Contessa sounds a bit like, I don't know, the old age, the La Comtesse or something like that. I don't know what they meant with this name, uh, make it sound posh in the 1950s way maybe. This camera actually uh, was produced since 1962. The whole line was made until around 1970. And this is sort of the top line model. It's got a rangefinder, coupled rangefinder. It's got a built-in light meter and it's even got a display for shutter time and aperture within the viewfinder. Actually, the camera feels very lightweight, sort of even hollow in your hand. Uh, it's made from stamped metal, so we've got a Zeiss Tessar lens, Zeiss West, uh, famous Zeiss West lens. <laughs> F2.8 Tessar lenses are very versatile, actually. Um, it's fitted in this slight awkward looking uh, mount here. It's a fixed lens. We've got a leaf shutter that runs all times from 15th to 500th of a second uh, plus B. And by the way, then flash synchronization is also 500th of a second. That's the advantage of leaf shutters. And the aperture ring sits behind it. Uh, it's stepless, no clicks from 2.8 to 22. Uh, it's got a rangefinder, so the main viewfinder window is here. Rangefinder window is the circle here. And behind this plate, there sits the selenium light meter. Um, the advantage of selenium meters is they don't need any battery. It's so, so, uh, sort of a very early version of a solar cell. Normally they don't work that well after 50, 60 years, uh, but this light meter still works very well. And you have a light meter readout here, but you also got one in the viewfinder. Here's your flash uh, mount and a hot, hot shoe. Uh, the shutter trigger and uh, here is your frame counter which you have to manually reset and uh, here you wind your film it's kind of a funny design uh, and down here is the rewind so this you have to press and then you can rewind the film apart from that no more features but note the beautiful chrome plating of this camera very very 60s design also these stripes yeah it's kind of a really cool camera i think Actually, this camera is really fun to use. Uh, I didn't really expect that. I'm not a huge rangefinder guy, as you know. Uh, yeah, the rangefinder looks good. Uh, it's of course not comparable with a Leica rangefinder, but it's bright and clear. And I really love how you see uh, the light meter uh, above the picture and the shutter and uh, the aperture information below the picture, which is just, uh, you know, they took it from here. It's just an optical picture. A superimposed into the rangefinder. <laughs> it's very charming and it works very well. Shutter button is here. 
it all feels a little bit basic in a way, but it works very well. It's a very unobtrusive little shooter. Uh, by the way, ISO you also set on this shutter speed dial here. And I've set it to ISO 100 and now it's the usual point and shoot. You point, you start at the front, focus, then this thing turns the shutter time. Let's do two fifties of a second. Um, let's go somewhere in the shape because I want to overexpose a bit. It says F8. Makes sense to me. It's like Sunny 16. The beauty of uh, leaf shutter is very quiet. Wind on, up to the next shot. These uh, small rangefinder cameras were pretty common in the 60s and also in the 70s, uh, basically until autofocus cameras were introduced, which was in the very late 70s. And this uh, Zeiss Econ camera uh, series, they had a lot of viewfinder cameras, but the LKE with a rangefinder, that was a very welcome addition to make it more fun to shoot because focusing is critical, you know that. And, um, Size Econ, they lost their camera business in 1971, I think, or 72. They stopped all camera production because sales were so slow. I don't think that these cameras were the main problem, but more the very cluttered range of SLR cameras that they offered. And the Japanese cameras were just more innovative at the time. And this camera also was pretty dated because Today we find the selenium meter is something very cool, it doesn't need a battery, but back then it was regarded as something that is prone to fail and not that accurate. So you see all the settings are here around the lens, focus, um, shutter, shutter speed and aperture and here on the same ring as shutter speed sits the ISO settings, but there is no ISO, it's still DIN, uh, Deutsche Industrienorm, the German settings. So um, you press this thing and then you can, it's a bit fiddly, hey, hey, hey. You press it, <laughs> wait, take two fingers, press one, turn the other one, now I see it turns. ISO 100 is 21, I always like to give it a little bit overexposure, so I put it on DIN. 20 which is like ISO 80 and yeah once you don't press this thing again then it's locked now it's very easy everything works very smoothly 250 so no let's go 500 of a second and do a bokeh shot here Time for the verdict and uh, as always this is a very old camera it doesn't make sense to just uh, number crunch uh, and uh, talk about facts and figures and stuff like that uh, this is all about emotion as well one thing I noticed is many many people when I was shooting uh, this camera many people reacted very positively to the styling because it is so kind of quirky and it's so 1960s and it looks like from an old sci-fi movie could be in could be in a Star Trek uh, original series or the German Raumpatrouille Orion or something like that. With beautiful chrome plating uh, and this glass window here it looks super classy. 
and uh, the feature set isn't bad either. I mean, 500th of a second uh, sounds slow, but many old cameras have that, and it's also the flash sync time. So uh, maybe you want to try flash photography. Maybe I should make a video about that. What do you think? Uh, lens is very good. Tessar lens, you know them from many, many other cameras. This is a very good Tessar lens, super sharp when stopped down and at open aperture, also pretty beautiful. Um, so overall, I like it a lot. Uh, it's not an SLR camera, it doesn't try to be an SLR camera. Keep in mind these old rangefinder cameras have a horrible close focus distance of around one meter. That's a big downside, but that's inherent to these old cameras. And if you want to travel, there may be other rangefinder cameras, Japanese ones, that are a little, little bit smaller. But yeah, I enjoy shooting it a lot. If you buy a camera like this, make sure that if it's got a light meter, that the selenium meter still works somehow. Otherwise, yeah, it's meterless. It's half the fun. Um, only 50 euros buys you a camera like that. And that's, that's, of course, a great advantage because if you shoot it, your images won't look that different from Leica M6 pictures, believe me. So, overall, highly recommended for those who like this sort of cameras and want to have some light-hearted fun in analog photography. And that's it for today. I hope you liked it, maybe found it even useful. If you did so, then please leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate your support, by the way. And if you've got any questions or comments about old cameras or photography in general, write something down in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments and I will happily answer every single one of them. You know that. And you hear the birds singing here. So, have a great time, have a great day, uh, live long and prosper. And I see you in the next video. Bye.